Hey, so I've got just a couple of minutes here and I wanted to touch base on Caseplot uh, GB2 thingy, this big campaign. I'm having, uh, have had a great time and a lot of fun and I'm not sure though, uh, given where we're at, how much more I want to play. Uh, my desire to continue is driven primarily from the fact that I don't like to stop things. The campaigns are busy and turns long, so never was the intention if we go all the way back to video one or two, we talked about uh, playing through June of 42 at the very most, uh, or uh, the end of January. So, we would be cutting it short by a month if we stopped now. Well, the primary reason why I'm considering that is, you know, the exercise, I, I had a number of things in mind, right? Clearly, as part of our chronological walkthrough, we wanted to cover this aspect of the East Front in a fair amount of detail. And we wanted to, in particular, explore what happened in the northern section, the northern area uh, north of Moscow and whether or not that would have had a major impact on the conflict if things had gone differently, uh, et cetera, et cetera, right. <clears throat> I think we'll look back over the game. We've made a few mistakes here and there. Uh, I do recall now as I'm, as I'm thinking about things, I did make one or two errors where uh, for two or three turns, we may have been bringing uh, supply on uh, deeper, in on the rail network in the north than it should have been. It should have all been uh, being trucked in from Smolensk. And in fact, we were bringing it in by rail without paying for the rail, I don't think, uh, for a couple of turns, maybe three or four turns, which you know, could make a fairly significant difference in terms of the number of uh, extenders and rail uh, capability that we had and our ability to push uh, supply forward. But by the same token, we also lost a disproportionately high number of trucks and all the rest of it in the mud. And we had mud earlier than we should have and longer than we did. And the freeze didn't come at the same time. So I think it all washed out. So I'm not too fussed about our historical accuracy and things like that. So I, I think I feel like I've got a lot of value out of playing the game and experiencing uh, you know, what happened in the northern section around uh, the north of Moscow. Uh, reinforcing first Panzer and Fourth Army, that kind of that kind of area. Uh, I've also really enjoyed uh, playing through the southern section of the map. Uh, while we didn't or have not captured Rostov yet, uh, we have completely cleared out and moved forward with enormous amount of supply and staged our forces down in the south to make a really solid uh, push either on Stalingrad or oil fields or whatever the case may be uh, in forty two. Lots of divisions staged, fair amount of supply. Lots of fun. Uh, but as I sit and look at the you know number of games I have awaiting play, and the quality of some of those that I'd like to try and get to, I'd like to get into some of the GTS titles, I'd like to get the Gettysburg uh, game on the table, I'd like to get some other titles on the table as well that are fairly large. Uh, I've got a new friend that wants to play DAC. Uh, I wouldn't mind getting an opposed game of OCS under the table. And I can certainly set DAC up in one corner of my game room in this room here and still have room to put you know one or two other two or three mapper games up that uh, would give me some more flexibility. Right now I've got this you know thing you can see in the background. I've got it set up. And there's nothing else going on. I can't actually can't even physically get to some of my other game titles. So it may be, and I'm going to sit on this tonight and have a couple of cocktails and think about it. It may be time to uh, pack this up, or at least at the very least, what I'll probably do is document it really well. Uh, and if I want to continue on Vassal, I can, or uh, just write it off as you know here's where we're at I think we've I think if we had have got to the point where 
something that was ahistorical had to happen. So maybe the, the Germans had have uh, completed their encirclement of Moscow and eliminated all those forces in the Moscow region or, or severely or significantly reduced those. I think it probably would have ended the game there anyway. Uh, I just called it the Fyrick victory, regardless of when that happened, whether it was, you know, by the 1st of January or midway through January, whatever the case may be. Um, I think that is possible by the mid, mid middle of January, but unlikely. Uh, particularly given the fact that uh, Moscow still managed to wiggle its way, Stalin has managed to wiggle his way into a trade supply uh, at the end of the 26th of December, despite a massive, massive efforts on the German part. Uh, so it's just curious to see how, how that would all play out. Uh, I think the Germans have got, the, sorry, the Soviets have got the chops to uh, hang on and not potentially hang on and not be uh, eradicated as, as aggressively as I perhaps thought they could be. South is a whole other story though. In the South, I really don't feel confident that the Soviets have enough force to do much of any substance to hold out. Uh, I would be very concerned. Just seems to be a very different cadence of play down there given the terrain and all the rest of it. Uh, and it's uh, it's very very interesting down there. So, food for thought. Things I'm thinking about. I'm not sure if I'm going to pack it up. Uh, I'm happy to take your input. Love to hear what you have to think about it. Whether you've enjoyed you know the last 41 or 42 videos. Uh, whether you want to see more. I mean, part of why I do this is for my own satisfaction and my own enjoyment that I like to record these things. But it certainly also is I, I enjoy doing it uh, with you and for you guys as well. That doesn't mean I need a lot of you to say, oh, gee, you can keep going or stop because you're crazy. Uh, just if it's interesting and you want to see what's going on and continue to see what's going on, then let's talk about it. Uh, at this point, I'm feeling pretty much that as the, as the Germans become more and more fragile and they stretch and stretch and stretch to try and uh, achieve objectives in, in and around Moscow, we're certainly moving slightly more away from the, the game's intent in terms of the victory conditions and things like that, because now it's uh, 42 technically, and we should be focused now on the Southern victory conditions, which arguably could be achieved. And over the next two or three turns, if I was gonna do anything about that, I'd be allocating rail to, uh, I'd be pulling back from Moscow and, uh, reorienting my forces southwards to achieve those goals. Although it is an enormously, enormous long distance to get to the south for several, you know, I probably want to pull five or six divisions out and go into a holding mode around Moscow because I think I can hold Moscow, that sort of U-shaped uh, uh, area around Moscow. I think I could keep that bottled up fairly well. Uh, Certainly wouldn't need to keep hold of Kalin. Anyway, there's a lot of others. There's a lot of stuff. Um, just thought I'd share this with you. So we'll, we'll talk. Let's talk. Later.